Welcome back to Seasons, a devotional based on my book by the same name. And speaking of seasons, the chapter in the book is called To Every Season. There is one thing that you need to understand about Canadians if you ever want to come to our country and fit in. Get used to talking about the weather. I've actually been in debates with friends as we extolled the virtues of winter, spring, summer, or fall, or autumn. Most Canadians are fiercely loyal to their particular season of choice. Spring lovers can't understand why anybody would find winter anything but bitterly cold. Winter lovers look upon summer folks as being a little bit whiny. At the end of the day, though, Canadians thrive in all of our seasons. We don't have any choice in the matter. Although not quite as distinct as the ebb and flow of natural seasons, the life of a church has certain seasons as well. There might be seasons where it seems that every Sunday that you attend church, there is an exuberant expression of worship and you can just sense God's presence when you walk in the door. Well, unless you happen to be somebody who wonders why the worship sets are going a little bit longer, why don't they quit the fluff and get on to the main thing, which is really sound systematic Bible teaching and theological discussions. When a church moves out of the sanctuary and out into the street to minister to those in their neighborhood with practical acts of kindness and generosity, there will always be those within that congregation who complain of an apparent lack of pastoral care towards those already in the congregation. I believe that the Holy Spirit desires to bring a supernatural ebb and flow within a body of believers to bring balance. We do a great disservice to him and those around us by grumbling when our local body enters a season to which we as individuals would not naturally gravitate. By stubbornly refuse to budge from our comfort zone or our opinions on what church should be like, not only do we as individuals miss out, but we can stop the progress of the congregation as a whole from becoming well-rounded and balanced in our corporate walk with the Lord. In the natural we need seasons to make sure that the crops that we plant and harvest are abundant enough that we are able to not just feed ourselves, but to feed those around us. And it's no different when it comes to the things of God. Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11 says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. My mother raised five children, and so there were plenty of household bickering going on. She would basically say, work it out amongst yourselves and play nicely and everybody gets their turn. Before you think I'm beating up on modern Christianity, I'm actually not. This kind of attitude has crept into church life since the very early days of the church in the book of Acts. One faction of Widows, for example, complained that they weren't getting as much attention as another group. Paul had to go explain himself to the council just to make sure that he wasn't leaving the Jewish people out of the discussion as he ministered to the Gentiles. But just because that was happening way back then, it doesn't mean that we can excuse our behavior now. And Paul addressed such childish behavior several times 
in the epistles, 1 Corinthians 13 comes to mind, the love chapter. If your nose is a little bit out of joint because you don't appreciate the season that your church or your family is in at this particular time, maybe ask the Lord to put your nose back in joint and appreciate and celebrate the new life that's springing up in the lives of those that are fed by what's happening within your local congregation. Your turn will come. Be patient and play nicely without complaining.